Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking all things functional kitchen. So if you saw last week's video, you know Stella has transitioned into her weaning table and just like she was definitely communicating something to us by always throwing a tantrum when we put her in the high chair, she was definitely doing the same thing every time we tried to help her wash her hands. We haven't found a step stool that would be tall enough for her to reach the sink just yet. I decided it would be much easier for us to bring the water down to her level and initially we went with this Delta Children's simple sink that was a lot more compact and would work really well in our small kitchen space. Unfortunately, even though it's designed for kids one and up, it's definitely not designed for kids like Stella, who within 48 hours figured out that she can move the entire sink and get to the water reservoir in the back, and then we had an entire flooding situation. And while it's great to learn natural consequences, a flood every single day isn't something that this house can really take because it's already flooded once. We had to return that and I had to bite the bullet and go ahead and get that IKEA play kitchen that everyone is hacking. And I'll go ahead and link some of the blogs and videos that I watch to get inspiration on what I can do to hack the IKEA kitchen to be the way that we like it. And hopefully some of those can be very helpful for you as well. So why even bother with the entire functional kitchen? Well, as with all things Montessori, we're trying to help them learn how to do it themselves. So obviously I did want to mainly incorporate a functioning sink for her to be able to wash her hands on her own, but as she's getting older and older, she's getting more interested in food prep. So I figured we might as well get a space for her where she can food prep herself and also start setting the table on her own. The IKEA play kitchen does have a space for all of those functions, which is why you see a lot of Montessori homes incorporating it. Now, obviously you do not need this in order to have a functioning kitchen for your child. You can get one of those helper towers. I don't particularly want to get one because again, in a traditional Montessori setting everything is brought down to the child's level so they're not trying to hike up two flights of stairs essentially to get to what they need to do every single time instead everything is easily accessible for them while I was looking for ways to figure out how to get the functioning sink to work I ran into a beautiful blog post that I will again link down below where it showed how they painted the entire kitchen and it was so modern and so beautiful. We figured let's make Stella's at least incredibly beautiful and something that she will enjoy. So as far as things that we did to make it more beautiful, we painted the bottom cabinet a darker gray color and the top parts that were not already white, we painted a white color. We initially spray painted just like the blog post said and that created an entire mess for us. We're not really good with spray paint. So I had to redo the whole thing with just mini rollers and paint brushes. And if you're not really familiar with spray paint, I recommend just going the traditional route as well. I also painted the sink to be white instead of gray and I got some real handles for her to have instead of the play handles because again, I just thought it looked a little bit nicer. And I added some decorations on top and I also got her some towels that would kind of match the entire color scheme and that way she can hang them on those beautiful handles that we got because when I I tried to introduce to her a towel at a separate place. She actually walked over to our oven handle and tried to put it there because that's where we hang our kitchen towels. So I figured she needs a little space for herself where she can do the same thing with her towels and that's been a favorite activity of hers now. She will take out all of her napkins and towels that she has in the extra storage bin and try to hang them up by herself. So things that we did to make the kitchen actually functional. Obviously the first thing is to get the water running somehow and we did go with the two tank system so we have clean water coming in and then we have dirty water coming out into a different system. That way I'm okay with her washing her hands there and washing food there and it's not just a play kitchen where the water is recycled over and over because that wouldn't be very sanitary for her to be doing any kind of food prep in. I went with one gallon bottles. I've seen people go with two gallons and it would definitely last you a lot longer. For some reason at the time that I was shopping, there weren't any decently priced empty two gallon bottles. So I just went with a one gallon water bottle that we put right behind the sink. And then this waste container bottle is actually a container from a set of rattles that her uncle had bought for her and they work perfectly together. The other option we were going to try for the waste container was actually just to get a milk container just something that would be tall enough where since there's no tubing or anything for the water to drain out of the sink, it wouldn't be splashing all over the place because if you just let the water run and splash into something just wide and not very deep, eventually the water splashes everywhere. For the water to run up, we got one of those pumps that you put on top of drinking water. There are some beautiful ones that look a lot more like a faucet. However, I noticed that the nozzle is very tall. Stella is already having a hard time getting to the button anyways and something that would be even taller would be harder for her to reach. We also learned the hard way with our own bathroom that if the faucet is very high uh, it creates a lot of spillage again and a lot of splashing when the water hits the sink so we got the water going up we've got it going down the way that we let the water drain is just by creating a hole in the sink I know some people also just leave the sink as is without draining the hole so then every time the child is done you take out the sink and dump the water out I just figured 
for something to be really, really functional, it would make more sense just to drill a hole and let the water completely pour out. Because it is a place sink, it is completely flat, so all the water does not drain out. You, you are left with some dead water on the side, so you do need to at least once a day fully drain it out, but it's definitely a lot better than having to drain it every single time. Other things we did is we put contact paper over the entire countertop, and I learned this from a YouTuber, I believe it was Kevin's video, and I'll link it down below again. He actually mentioned that his wife thought of this because, again, the play kitchen is not made to handle real water, so if you keep splashing water on the countertop, eventually it would bubble up and just cause a lot of damage. So she had put contact paper to prevent that. You'll notice we also put something in the back. The actual IKEA Play Kitchen leaves that space open. I put kind of a little backsplash for her with all the water splashing. Eventually it will get to the back, which for us, we put it up against the brick wall. It wouldn't be too much of a trouble, but I figured if we ever need to move it somewhere else, I don't want water splashing everywhere. So again, we put just a, a little piece of board in the back. It was like a $3 piece. Uh, nailed it in and put some contact paper on that as well. That way all the water is kind of contained in her little kitchen area. So as far as the setup that we have for the kitchen right now, I'm keeping it very minimal and I actually reset this every single time that we're getting ready for food prep because again, Stella is very excited about this and in order to set her up for success, I figured I will give her extremely limited options, which means the options that she needs for this specific meal time. As she gets more into this routine and understands what this space is for and what we do with it, I will definitely put all of her plates, all of her cups, all of her utensils, everything in there and that way she can have easy access to it at all times. What I've been doing is putting on the top her placemat, a napkin that she will use and actually her new egg slicer that we purchased also goes on the top shelf and the bottom shelf I will put either a bowl and a plate or just a plate. I did also set up a second station on the side and that will contain on the top level whatever snacks are appropriate for the time. So eventually I will give her a choice of snacks if whatever she can prepare herself right now the easiest thing that we are working on is a banana, something that she can peel and try to slice. So I'm putting a banana in there and then whatever kind of cracker or bread that she's wanting that day goes in there. That way she can take it out and actually move it to her kitchen. And on the second level, I've got all of her extra towels that we will use for spills, her extra napkins, and her kitchen towels. So hopefully this has given you some ideas and inspirations on introducing a functional kitchen to your child. If you've got any other questions or requests for videos, definitely drop me a comment down below. Always excited to talk to you guys down there. And until next time, hope you stay safe.